Today, we think about a nuclear atom. Uh, even with the wave mechanical model, there is a structure to an atom. And the general view that we have as chemists is that the atom is mainly made up or mainly filled with these electrons, which are uh, uh, negatively charged and, and show up as red in this diagram. The um, uh, diameter of a typical atom is in the ballpark of 10 to the minus 10th meters. Okay. Now, uh, the electrons occupy, as I say, nearly all of that and all the negative charges there. The nucleus, on the other hand, is present. A uh, very small fraction of the atom uh, is occupied by this nucleus where all the positive charge and most of the mass are. Now, uh, the nucleus is made up of uh, uh, positively charged particles, which we call protons. And incidentally, it's about uh, 10 to the minus 15 or 10 to the minus 16 meters compared to 10 to the minus 10. So you can see it's very, very small uh, compared to the size of the atom. So the proton P plus are shown as these pink uh, spheres here. The neutrons are shown as the white spheres. And the number of positive charges P plus would have to equal the number of electrons E minus for the whole atom to be neutral. OK. So. Uh, then we have three subatomic particles that, as chemists, we are most uh, often working with. And table 2.2 shows the properties of those. I want you to recognize the proton is P plus, the neutron is N0, or just N, and the electron as E minus. The relative charges are 1 plus, or the absolute charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. Uh, and the neutron has zero charge. The electron has a negative one charge. Um, and the relative masses are as shown over here. Uh, you can see the mass of a proton is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 24. Uh, and the mass of an electron, these are in grams, uh, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 28. So you can see the big difference between the two. So that's what we uh, then were, were looking at. Uh, now, I want to talk about qualities of atoms that weren't obvious from these initial um, experiments. And the existence of isotopes is the first thing I, I want to look at because uh, this is a spot where Dalton got it wrong. He thought all of the atoms of any element had exactly the same mass and the same charge and so forth, number of positive charges. Uh, but he wasn't right. When enough experimental uh, uh, ability had been developed, capability had been developed, it was shown that there were some elements that had atoms with different masses. And so along the line, that meant uh, that they must have different numbers of neutrons. They had to have the same number of protons because that fixes the number of electrons. And that tells you what kind of atom it is. Well, all atoms of a given type have the same number of protons and electrons, but they can differ by the number of neutrons. Now, we use some terminology in this uh, in our symbolism. Uh, we'll take some kind of an atom here whose elemental name is, uh, has a symbol X. And uh, we would recognize this as a symbol from the periodic table. Then. Uh, to the left, as a subscript, we put Z, meaning the atomic number, the number of protons for that uh, flavor of atom. Okay? And to the left, as a superscript, we put an A. And A is called the mass number. A consists of the sum of the number of protons and the number of neutrons. Okay. So this gives us all we need to know about the particles that make up the atom. So uh, uh, an atom of carbon 12, the 12 here refers to the atomic, uh, to the mass number. An atom of carbon 12 consists of six protons, because it's carbon, six electrons, because there are six protons, and six neutrons, because that's the way it is. So this would be carbon 12, and you see it left superscript 12 and a left subscript of 6. 
6 tells that it's carbon. 12 says that it's the isotope carbon 12 here. Oxygen can be described as uh, one form of it can be described as oxygen 16. And here there are uh, eight protons because it's oxygen. Z is equal to eight. You find that in the periodic table. Um, and uh, eight neutrons. Now, you might get the wrong idea from looking at these two, that the number of neutrons is always equal to the number of protons. Is that true? You think it's true? It's not. There's no chemical significance to the fact that there are the same number of neutrons as protons here. The only thing you can say is that as atom gets heavier, atoms get heavier, there tend to be an increasing proportion of neutrons to protons. That's really all you can say about it. Now, let's look at a heavy atom here. This is uranium-235. Uranium has Z is equal to 92. So it's some of the, one of the heavier elements in the periodic table. And this particular form of uranium, of course, will have 92 electrons because it has 92 protons. And overall, uh, it's... Uh, Atomic, uh, its mass number is 235, so that means that 235 minus 92 will give us 143 neutrons. But uranium, as you find it, has uh, different numbers of neutrons in its atoms. Another form of uranium that's quite prominent and uh, available is uranium-238. So that means the mass number is 238, but it's still uranium, so there has to be 92 protons and 92 electrons. And so if you uh, subtract 92 from 238, you get 146 neutrons. So these two things are isotopes. Isotopes have the same number of protons and, of course, the same number of electrons. Uh, so they're chemically the same atoms, but they have a different mass. Questions on isotopes? That makes sense to you? All right. Now, uh, there is a skill that we need to get while we're here, and that is how to determine the number of neutrons. Remember, the mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons. The atomic number is the number of protons, so we can calculate the number of neutrons from uh, the mass number minus the atomic number. Uh, there is, uh, in chlorine atoms, there are two prominent isotopes. Chlorine-35 is one of them, so that means A is equal to 35. And all chlorine atoms have 17 protons, so Z is equal to 17. And so chlorine-35 atoms have 35 minus 17, or 18 neutrons. There's another form of chlorine called chlorine-37, which will end up having 20 neutrons. So they are isotopes of one another. So here's a problem. An atom of boron-11 has Z is equal to 5. How many protons, electrons, and neutrons does it contain? So the place to start is the atomic number, because the atomic number tells us two things. If Z is equal to 5, then there are 5 protons and 5 electrons. That's what z is equal to 5 means to us. Now, it's boron 11 that they're asking us about. So the mass number, A, is equal to 11. That's what goes right here. Boron 11 uh, has a mass number of 11. So the number of protons uh, is 5. The total number of protons and neutrons is 11. So 11 minus 5 equals 6 neutrons. So five protons, five electrons, six neutrons. Questions on that? Just a little mathematics for you, a little adding and subtracting. OK. Now, the next question is, how do we find out whether an atom or anything uh, contains isotopes? We'll start with atom, because that's easier. There is a device called a mass spectrometer. And it is nothing more than a modified cathode ray tube. It has a dogleg left. 
has a glass tube with the dog leg left for you golfers in the audience. Um, and it has a sample entry spot over here with the heater that converts the sample into a gas. And there's an electron beam uh, produced by the cathode where the electron beam uh, has sufficient energy so the electrons, uh, uh, the electron particles here, which would have been called cathode rays, uh, strike the atoms in question and drive electrons off of them. So they become ions. Here's what I mean. Suppose neon gas were present there. Neon gas is made up of, you guessed it, neon atoms. One of these high energy electrons from the electron beam down here strikes a neon atom. One thing that can happen is that it can knock off one of the neon's electrons. So this would leave two electrons free and roaming over here, and it would leave the neon with a positive charge uh, because it lost a negative charge. So if a neon plus shows up over here, these two plates have negative charges. So it's going to be attracted to these plates. And some of the neon atoms will just hit the plate and uh, be neutralized with an electron and go back to neon atoms. The neon ions can go back to neon atoms. But some of them will go through the slit. And a beam will form here. And the beam goes down the tube. And these that beam is a Ne plus ions. It's an ion because it has one more positive charge than negative charge, which means it has one more proton than it does electrons. Well, sure, it lost one, right? So it comes down here and it sees this magnetic field. The magnetic field is set up in such a way that the neon atoms are attracted to it. And so they change their direction and they start down this long part of the apparatus. Now the thing that we have to remember is that if there are any isotopes of the neon ions there, that they will be affected somewhat differently because they have different masses by the magnetic field. In fact, the lighter ones are going to be bent more. Their path is going to be bent more and the heavier ones are going to be bent less. So what happens here when you put the neon through is you see three signals, a big one, a little bitty one, and a sort of medium-sized one. And they correspond to neon 20. A neon has, if we look at the periodic table, let's see if we can get the periodic table to get up. Hold your breath, everyone hold your breath. Ah, it came up, okay. Neon has 10 <coughs> protons, because it has Z is equal to 10 right up there. Okay, so that means that neon 20 it has a lower mass than neon 21, which has a lower mass than neon 22. And so this, uh, this tells us this is neon 20, this is neon 21, this is neon 22, and the height of the peak tells us how many of each type of isotope are there. Now if you apply this to other kinds of, of gases, you see interesting things. Uh, for example, if we put argon in, there's only one peak, basically. Argon only has one kind of atoms with respect to the mass. But if we put krypton in, we see one, two, three, four, five, maybe six peaks. Meaning krypton has not two isotopes, not three, but it's got a whole handful of them here. Right? And the one that's highest here looks like uh, about 84, something like that, whereas argon over here is about 40, approximately. So uh, with argon, you can get the mass by just reading the chart. With krypton, you can't because you have a uh, collection of different isotopes here and you have to worry about how much each contributes to the average mass. So when you have a mixture of isotopes, you have to worry about the average mass. Okay, let's see how we do this with neon before we finish today. Um, I have over here the neon spectrum that shows neon 20 is 90.5%. Neon 21 is 0.3%. Neon 22 is 9.2%. Uh, what we have to do is to take a weighted average of these. In other words, we assume their masses 
and we multiply each by the decimal equivalent of their percent abundance to get the average mass overall. So the weighted average mass is a summation uh, for over all the peaks, one, two, three peaks, of the isotopic mass times a fractional abundance. Okay, let's, let's see if we can uh, write it down here. So we'll start with neon 20. It has a mass of 20 atomic mass units uh, times the fractional abundance. 90.5 is 0 0.905. It's a decimal fraction. And if you multiply that out, you get 18.1 atomic mass units. Uh, and I'll say more about what that means uh, uh, later. 18.1 uh, is the contribution from neon 20. If you take neon 21, you've got just a tiny peak over here, 0.3%. So that's 0 0.003. And uh, that boils down to 0 0.06 AMU, a very small contribution from neon 21. And then we got neon 22 over here. This is 22 times uh, 9.2, that would be 0 0.092. And that is uh, 2.02. So this is a one. This is 20.18 AMUs is the weighted average of these three peaks. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Um, now um, what I want to say is the periodic table will reflect this 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 number. Uh, we would expect the peri periodic table to show that the mass of neon is 20.18, okay? And in fact, here is the entry in the periodic table for neon, and you can see it is 20.18. Do we have questions on that? Uh, uh, when I was a student way back right after the last ice age, uh, the atomic mass scale was based on oxygen. Honest, when I went to college, the atomic mass scale was based on oxygen, but it was changed not too long after that, about a thousand years ago, uh, to, uh, to be based on carbon. And it, it looks like this today. Uh, the atomic mass standard uh, is uh, defined as carbon, the carbon-12 atom, or the isotope, if you prefer, as defined as exactly 12 atomic mass units, and so one AMU atomic mass unit is defined as one twelfth of the mass of a carbon atom. Uh, on this scale, uh, hydrogen atoms have approximately one AMU's atomic mass, 1.008. If you look at the periodic table and you look for the number under hydrogen, right there, 1.008. And the reason it's not exactly one is that hydrogen has isotopes. There is a heavy hydrogen and a, something else called tritium. Now, each one of these elements has um, its own average atomic mass. Oxygen, for example, is right on the money at four significant figures for 16. But neon, as we saw, is 20.18 because there are three isotopes. So that's what these numbers mean. Uh, and on your periodic table and constant sheet, the mass equivalent of 1 AMU is given 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Okay, so that's the basis of the atomic mass scale.